Hey friends, welcome back to our kitchen. So I thought it would be a really fun video to share three amazing sandwich recipes with y'all because if you're like me and Bunky, we love something easy in the summertime. Probably a lot of us are this way and you wanna just like be able to throw it in your cooler or have like a no fuss dinner. And if you know my Bunky, you know he is a sandwich aficionado and it's like one of his very favorite things in the entire world. So we're gonna make three really yummy sandwiches. This one tonight we're actually having for dinner and this is going to, to be packed with flavor. Tell us what we are having for dinner. Tell us what the sandwich is. So this sandwich is actually, um, it was inspired by one of our restaurants that we frequent. So it's loosely based upon that. We're, we're kind of making it up ourselves, but it's a Caribbean chicken, mango salsa relish, delicious sandwich. That's exactly what it is. That's what it is. We have some chicken and marinade that we put in there <laughs> a little bit ago, and that's just like getting all that flavor in there. I'll show you guys right here on the screen what marinade we're using. Bunky's gonna go ahead and make our salsa. Yeah, and I'm calling it, you know, we're calling it a salsa, but as I've thought about it more, I really think I wanna call it more of a relish. Look how um, pretty this is gonna be. I just love all the summer colors. So. For starters, we're gonna get this mango going. The tricky thing about mangoes is that they have the pit in the middle. Yeah. I tell you what, you took that sliver off and I could immediately smell this thing. Is it smelling good? Yes. And see, also something with summertime that I love is just like using fresh ingredients. I feel like summer recipes are pretty. You can get things out of your garden. It's just the best. We gotta say, we don't think we have quite a ripe mango. You know how uh, some people are good at picking watermelons? Yeah, we need y'all to tell us like, how do you know when to pick a mango? Because <laughs> ours isn't quite ripe, but I think it's gonna be fine. We're still gonna go with yeah. it. The flavor's gonna be there. I thought it was a little bit, um, I mean, it was kind of soft. So I thought that like, you know, we had a good one in hand. Okay, so cut your mango into tiny little like bite-sized cubes. Now we are going to core this guy because we don't want to have all the seeds in there. I have to say that trash can being right there is the most convenient thing ever. <laughs> it really is. It is so nice. I feel like this is a very easy little like salsa or relish, whatever you want to call it, that Bunky's making. And it's something that you can just like keep on hand in the fridge for like a cool, refreshing little like snack in the summertime. Eat this with some tortilla chips. It would also be delicious. Mm. Those are literally the most perfect little jalapeno cubes I've ever seen. Wow, that is a lot of jalapeno. We're also gonna rough chop some cilantro and put that in there. Can y'all tell this is like a bunky sandwich? Oh <laughs> this is what he orders at one of our favorite restaurants at the beach. And then kind of like as our juice for this, we're gonna squeeze a lime right over top and then we're just going to kind of let this sit and marinate for like 15 20 minutes so all those flavors can like really marry together that's a good juicy lime i think we should add just um a pinch of salt and pepper i almost feel like a pinch of sugar would be good in here i was gonna say i want to put some sugar you know what you, you should put in here what a splash of like white wine vinegar or something yeah you want to yeah let's do that you know what else i thought i'd put in here what here's some salt by the way a little salt um I thought about putting honey in it. Ooh. Like instead of sugar, like just doing honey. Okay, I'm gonna do just a splash of the vinegar. Oh, one more of those. Okay. One more of those. We need a little more juice here. Okay. There we go. And a little drizzle of honey. You know my favorite part about making this? What? It is so beautiful outside mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah. And we're making it on the Blackstone. So we get to enjoy our evening outside. I mean, if y'all can tell, you know, not a drop of sweat on me out here. So <laughs> it's so it's, nice today. It's beautiful. Well, he's got this thing heating up. I feel that heat come off of it. Yeah, and I'm going with a little bit of a experimental cheat code method here. We oh. got the spray version of some avocado oil. So hopefully this works out for us. 
That was good. Mm. That was good, Funky. You want me to spray your oil? Yes, please. Flip to my loo. Oh, I like this. That's a good, actually, good yeah. little tip. I've never, we've never tried that before. Because then you don't have to use your paper towel and like spread it all around. Like it's just done. Mm hmm. We have not tried this marinade yet, uh -uh. but I'm excited to because it might be like a go-to. It smells so good. Though. I know. Someone does not like being left alone in here. We hear you, silly. We hear you, mama. Now, my bunkie might be the sandwich aficionado, but I am the cheese aficionado, okay? When it comes to burger sandwiches, anything that involves cheese, I am your girl, and I will probably pick out the best one to go on there. <laughs> So we were like trying to think through what cheese we wanted on the sandwich and I told Bunky, I think a really good pepper jack would be perfection because it's going to bring a little bit of that like spice but it's still very melty. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. now of course I'm going to have this sandwich sans the mango salsa. Are you still putting pepper jack But on pepper it, jack, the chicken, hoagie roll, okay. I am your girl. Okay, I'm so excited. You got that beautiful crust on there. Mm. Flip number one complete, because you know, when I'm cooking chicken on the Blackstone, I am a fan of multiple flips. So yeah. we're gonna go about, that was probably like four minutes side one. We're gonna probably go a few more minutes on this side. Flip a rib again, flip maybe one more time, chop it up, cheese it up, bread it up. Eat, eat it up. up. <laughs> Got our hoagies, we like a hoagie for this was like, you want to go? Perfection. You want to go like tops down first? That's what I think, and then you can just do the other side and just get it, you know, warmed throughout. Okay, and then we're just gonna melt this pepper jack over top of all this chicken. I must say, that my bunkie is just an excellent blackstone griddle cooker user chef like that looks amazing funky well, let me just go ahead and say i don't normally brag upon myself for my <laughs> blackstone griddling cooking but i am pretty impressed with how this has come out like those look so so good y'all i'm just so excited now i do want to tell you that we did put a little bit of mayo inside before we put our chicken and cheese in there. I did take a little sample bite of this a little bit ago. I was wondering if you did. And you know, we were talking earlier, and this is certainly not one of the best mangoes that we've ever picked. Right. But I knew that once this sat for a little while, it was gonna juice up for us a little bit, which it has. And now I think there's, I mean, this is just gonna be, this right here is the ticket. This is what's taken this next level like over the top next level for sure just i mean and however much of this as you want you know mm -hmm. sorry for all the red onion there bonk but I can't kiss you, you later know, i'm sad I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> get a toothbrush and some mouthwash going here in a little bit <laughs> like I, I feel like i just put the most spectacular relish on top of it wow it looks so good oh that uh marinade on the chicken like it really got into the chicken like it tastes really good chicken's really good but the little bit of um like the mango onion jalapeno cilantro vibe that we going on bringing a little bit of that sweet factor in mm -hmm. y'all this is a good this is a good sandwich now, before we jump into this next sandwich, I do want to say a huge thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video. You guys know we have been members of Thrive for, gosh, probably like two years now, and we love it so much because we save so much money by shopping Thrive, and as much as we love summer sandwiches, we also love summer snacks, and there is just nowhere else I would rather stock my pantry for summer snacks than with Thrive Market. I feel like I find better snack options. I feel like they are at a much lower price, so I'm saving money, and I feel like they are healthier and depending on like what your diet is or your dietary needs you can go through thrive market and search if you want gluten-free or if you want things that are all organic 
Epic or Keto, it's all laid out there and they show you exactly what to buy based off your lifestyle. Now you already know I order my very favorite chips. I always get them from Thrive because they are a much better price than like in a regular grocery store. If y'all haven't tried these, they are the best ever. I've heard so many people rave about these honey mustard little pretzel bites, so I cannot wait to try these. Now I've had the Boom Chicka Pop like sweet popcorn, but I've never had their white cheddar, and white cheddar popcorn is my favorite, so I cannot wait to try it. Y'all know our obsession with Poppy is real, and they were having a sell on Poppy, so this is a really good place to stock up on Poppy if you're like us and you also love it. If you have not tried Thrive Market yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Just on this order alone, I saved $17.55, and all year I have saved over $150, and with how expensive groceries are right now, I am so happy to save wherever I can. Can. And if you don't know about Thrive Market, they are an online membership-based grocery store with an amazing selection of organic groceries, snacks, supplements, eco-friendly cleaning supplies, non-toxic beauty items, personal care items, and just so much more. There are two different membership options that you can choose from. So you can do a month-to-month, -month, and that's going to be $12 a month, or you can be billed annually at $59.95, which comes out to $5 a month. This is the option that we choose, but we save so much per order that the $5 is like totally worth the membership. And if you actually do not save more than $59.95, all year long, Thrive will refund you your membership. Thrive Market is my favorite way to stock up our pantry at affordable prices, and there is no better time to sign up than right now, because if you go to my description box and click that link, you're gonna be able to shop their biggest sale of the summer and save on thousands of top rated products and get 30% off your first order. Okay, now for this next sandwich, we're calling this one a Porky Cheesy. I'm actually not sure where we came up with this, I feel like I saw it at a food truck or something. Yeah, there was this, um, when I used to work over in East Charlotte, uh -huh. there was this food truck that came and they had a porky cheesy sandwich. I hope that's where we found it from. So this is like a grilled cheese, but with pulled pork on there. And we're gonna do some like caramelized onions. We even thought about doing like a onion bacon jam, which I think would be so incredibly scrumptious as mm -hmm. well, but for simplicity purposes, we're just gonna caramelize some onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these sliced up and we'll get them cooking. And then I'll show you guys what pulled pork we're gonna use because this is all about simplicity, ease, fast lunch and dinner ideas. So we're taking a few little like semi homemade shortcuts. And also though, like if you have had a barbecue or something and you've got a ton of leftover pork. Such a good idea. And to you use don't want to, you don't want to just keep eating barbecue sandwiches or yeah. just whatever. Transform it into the porky cheesy. Porky cheesy, here we come. <laughs> what's what's the trick with onions and mushrooms? More than you need because they disappear on you. That is so true. I'm always like, this is a ton of onions. Yeah. And then we'll cook them. I'm like, there's almost nothing. Yeah, where'd they go? Yeah. <laughs> finished looking I want to show you guys which pork we're gonna use now Bunky and I have actually never tried this pork before and I'm really excited to because I see so many people use it and love it so I hope that it's like a really easy way to have pulled pork um the instructions of how to heat it up could not be more simple you either put it in the microwave for like three minutes or you pop it in the oven for 15 so very easy prep work. There's like no prep work involved basically. <laughs> I know in a recent video ago, we talked about Sandra Lee and how I used to love her show on the Food Network. Yeah. I feel like this is such a Sandra Lee situation. S semi homemade. That's right, so could not be more easy. So this sandwich is like an epic grilled cheese. So when it comes to cheese, we're like, it's gotta be packed with cheese, but also the cheese needs to add flavor because this is a very simple sandwich. Sometimes simplicity is better. You only need a few ingredients as long as those ingredients are epic, okay? So for our cheeses, we decided to do a sharp cheddar, which I just feel like cheddar with pork is perfection. And then this is actually a like smoked Havarti because I feel like that smoked flavor with the pulled pork and then that sharp cheddar and the caramelized onions. Like you talk about 
just flavor explosion. This is gonna mm. be so good. This looks delicious and it smells good. Like I cannot get over how easy that was and it just like, mm, looks like some good barbecue if you ask me. Your onions? They smell divine. I know, Bunky is like obsessed with his onions right now. Okay, do you want, actually I'm gonna let you build this because you know, you like your sandwiches a particular way. What? See, I was <clears throat> I was thinking about this a moment ago, Bump, and I feel like there's a point in every person's life where it changes when you're making grilled cheeses. When you no longer use butter. When you no longer use just butter, but you also put a little mayo on your bread too. Wow, we're mm -hmm. really getting crazy with this. We're going big. <laughs> we're going big. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do the uh, I'm gonna do a mayonnaise smear here. Okay. That's gonna be on the- um, Outside? The outside. But then we're also still gonna drop a little bit of butter into the pan because that's still bringing more flavor. And not too much mayo. You really want enough just for a little bit of coverage. Just to get that beautiful golden brown just crust. To, just to cover that bread. Now here's where you get into the trouble with the grilled cheese and the mayonnaise style because this is going on the exterior, right? Yeah. So how do you build your grilled cheese and not make a mess of your plate with the mayo on it? You just make a mess. You either make a mess of your plate or you build it directly in the pan. You're putting then... four slices of cheese on there? Heck yeah. It's oh not- Oh my gosh. Bunky, it's not called a porky cheese. It's called a porky cheesy. So it's gotta be cheesy. I thought you put those other two slices there for my grilled cheese. <laughs> No, ma'am. Well, we could. Do you think this is excessive? No, I, I don't think so. Like, I think do you. A nice little layer of some pork action. Mm, yes. And you know what this is doing for us? What? Already giving us a little bit of that melt factor. Oh, melt. that's true, because that pork is warm. Look wow. At Look at those buttes. I might just put about half of them on and probably save the other half for something else that's glorious. going straight onto that little pile of butter. Okay. Let me just try this pork by itself. Since we're oh, it, you know? I'm about to tell you to give us like a little taste test of it. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. That is so good. Ooh! That is so good. That's gonna be so good in this sandwich. I cannot believe that we've never tried that. Who's in charge of the meals around here? <laughs> like, selling me short. Oh my gosh. That is fantastic. I'm so glad. Like, it looks good. I'm gonna try it. Just take that. Get your buns, you know, a can of beans, and you got dinner. <laughs> I'm gonna finish chewing a little more of Jack Daniel's barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Bunky is obsessed with it. So, in a similar fashion. Also, by the way, I wanted to let y'all know. We went with a nice sourdough yep. for our grilled cheese. Um, I just think that's nice. It's our fave. But with a grilled cheese, also a nice medium low temperature is what you want to go with, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. you cannot scorch that bread. You got to let it do its thing in that pan. And you I want that even cheese to melt this. so slowly. Yes. And as you can see here, we're starting to get the flop. Yes, the flop. That's the best. When that cheese is starting to melt over the edge of your bread and it's about to touch that pan, you know that it's time to check. Love it. Oh my goodness, monkey. And that's what the mayonnaise gives you, my wow. friend. Wow. Y'all, that is perfectly toasted grilled cheese bread if I have ever seen. And look at that. We are, whoo Y'all. Oh my goodness. My friends, that's the dance. That's the cheese dance that we're looking for yes. right there. Yes. All right, you got a firm grip on her? Got a firm grip. Oh yes. The cheese melt all the way around is just beautiful. It's, it's really, it's really showing itself over here. I mean, show See, us inside. Do like a... Yeah, show us it inside. Hold on, listen. You ready? Yes. Mm. 
Oh my word, Bunky love. Oh my gosh, Bunky. <laughs> I just had to save a little edge there. I got one of those onions. Oh my goodness. The porky cheesy. One of the best sandwiches ever. It is always sure to please, especially with those caramelized onions. <laughs> Definitely, don't be bashful about the amount of cheese you use. Use four slices. Yeah. Trust me. Now the way to take this up even a more notch if you can. My favorite, Siete sea salt vinegar serrano chips, the best ever. Orange poppy, most refreshing. This is a perfection of a little lunch if I ever saw one. Now, for this next sandwich, it is like a Miss Bunky sandwich. I know how I told you guys, there is a little coffee shop right in town, and we love to go there and get coffee, but also they make their own focaccia bread and sourdough, and so we love to go there and grab like bread for the week. And I know I've showed you guys the focaccia before, but if you did not see that video, please look at the masterpiece that is this focaccia. They put olives and rosemary and like roasted tomatoes, and it's, Literally the most amazing, delicious tasting bread you will ever taste. It's almost like eating a piece of pizza mm -hmm. without having to like make pizza. It's yeah, it's a, it's a meal in itself. It really. really is. So actually at our little coffee shop, they also make sandwiches. And this is my favorite sandwich on their menu using their focaccia. And it's kind of like a, um, how do you say it? Caprese. Caprese. And again, it's just like very simple ingredients, but all together they make just like the most delicious little sandwich. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of cut our focaccia. We're gonna share this like for lunch. So yeah. I'm just gonna say like, you know, we'll just use this piece. Give us a quick little side profile. Oh, just look at that. I mean, do you see the bubbles? It's. Oh, I mean, just, oh my gosh. So soft. Y'all, so on our sandwich, I'm gonna do like a little arugula salad kind of. And so I've got some arugula here. I'm gonna do a little drizzle of oil. And then I'm gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice all over it. And then just like a crack of pepper and a sprinkle of salt. And then I'm just gonna kind of toss this together. Now, I'm gonna add something to mine that they don't put on theirs. Look at that. Tastes good. Oh my gosh. Are you gonna shake some parm on there? No, but you could. I will, cause that's such a good <laughs> idea. Bumpy. Just that. Taste it. Mm. The like brightness on the lemon with the salt and pepper on mm -hmm. there. That is so good by itself. Mm. Arugula is also naturally peppery. Oh, it's so good. Ooh. I love the palm though, I'm gonna do that. Now, on their Caprice sandwich, they do not put prosciutto, but I love prosciutto. And it kind of like reminds me of Caprice, you know? So I was like, let's get some prosciutto, but crisp it up. So we have kind of like that crunchy element to our sandwich. Yes. So I have some freshly sliced prosciutto here, and I'm just gonna put it in a pan and kind of crisp it on both sides. So now to my focaccia. Oh, You're gonna eat the olive. olive. <laughs> We're gonna lay down a good layer of pesto, which you guys know, I'm a huge pesto fan, so this is kind of like my favorite part of the sandwich, because this with mozzarella, I mean, there's not a lot of things better, if you ask me. Now when I make a sandwich, mine aren't always as pretty as Bunky's. I don't always have the best smear, but tastes good, you know. Sometimes with sandwiches, an uneven application of a product uh -huh. is correct as well. See, mine are more like artistic. Or how do you say they're more rustic? They're artisan. Artisan. Now for the best part, we're gonna lay down some fresh mozzarella slices. Y'all, this is my kind of sandwich. Now, look at how crispy and perfect our prosciutto is. I mean, that's like candied bacon basically, mm. okay? Layer on your prosciutto and then just top it with like your little arugula salad. I'm gonna drizzle some balsamic. I thought I thought about that actually. Cause I feel like no mozzarella and pesto together 
are completely without some balsamic. Now, if you go to the coffee shop and get the sandwich, they put a big like heirloom tomato on here as well, which if you love tomatoes, like 1000% add your tomato here. I don't love tomatoes, so I'm gonna leave it off of mine. Hold, hold the tomato. <laughs> but if you're making this, if you love them, add the tomato, because I know that just makes it yeah. even more One juicy One of those nice heirlooms, it's like purple, red, and yellow, yeah. and green. But look at how beautiful this sandwich is. And it's so refreshing and salty and cold and warm. All the things together. Sweet, savory. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I feel like I like mine better. <laughs> the brightness and the freshness that the arugula brings, but then the sweetness of the balsamic but the saltiness of the prosciutto, it is like a match made in heaven. It is such a good sandwich. It just reminds me of summertime, picnic, incredible. This is one of my favorite sandwiches ever and the focaccia makes it. So if you can like make your own focaccia or you have somewhere you can get some, do it. Okay, that is gonna do it for this video. I hope y'all try these sandwiches and enjoy them as much as we have. They are so good. I'll have all the recipes linked down below for you. Also, do not forget to check out Thrive Market. They are having their biggest sale this summer. You do not wanna miss it. Plus 30% off your first order. So I'll have that information down below as well. If you're new, we would love for you to join our family. So before you leave, hit that subscribe button. Y'all give this one a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.